everyone, Dr. Jason with Axis Health. We're gonna talk about hip abductor weakness today. So when we talk about hip abductors, the one that we usually think about is gluteus medius, which is gonna be right here on the outside, kind of upper buttocks, outside of your hip here, below the belt. I have a belt on today because it's gonna help us with a couple tests. So I'll show you two tests that you can do at home to test for hip abductor weakness. Other reasons that you might have hip abductor weakness are if you have hip pain, if you have low back pain, those are the top two things that can be downstream results of hip abductor weakness. So let's show these two tests that you can do on your own. So the first one I'm actually gonna turn around and this is called Trendelenburg sign. So I'm gonna turn around here and you could look in a mirror here, but all you really have to do is bring one leg up and stand on one leg and think about holding it for 30 seconds, okay? So if you look at my belt line, you can see that it remains relatively level. And I'll switch sides here too. You can see that it's level, you can see that I have good balance. So that is a normal test. What an abnormal test is gonna look like is my hip is gonna dip. So let me show you that. I'll turn back around here. So when I'm standing on my left leg here, I'm actually testing this hip abductor for weakness. If I have weakness, what's gonna happen is my pelvis is gonna shift away from the posted leg and down. So my belt kind of shows you this slanted line down towards that direction. Sometimes you might see it right away. Sometimes it might take 15 or 30 seconds to appear, but look for hip unleveling in yourself and that will tell you that you have gluteus medius weakness. The other thing that we're gonna do that's gonna be more challenging is try and just do an abbreviated single leg squat. So with this, we're again gonna bring our leg off the ground and then we're gonna perform three squats consecutively here, okay? So bring your arms out for balance. Just go as deep as you can go here and then back up. And I'm gonna do three of them here. Balance is definitely part of it. You don't have to go all the way down to 90 degrees, but you do just want to get those three. I lost a little bit of my balance there, but what you want to look for is, A, you can't perform it at all. That's going to tell you that hip abductor weakness, a severe loss of balance, so you're just falling over to that opposite side because you can't post up on this hip well enough. And the other things downward in the kinetic chain that you want to look for are gonna be that maybe your foot caves in or your knee caves in like this. Or when you do that single leg, this knee comes way in here and that causes you to fail a little bit and you kind of roll to the outside, okay? It might help for you to not have your shoes on. I like to have my shoes on because they give me a good base, but try it without your shoes on. So those are the two tests. If you failed one of them, it probably means you have some hip abductor weakness, which could be causing your low back or your hip pain. So how do we fix that? Well, I'm gonna give you a few exercises to fix that, and we'll start with the pretty easy ones, okay? So the first one I wanna do is called a modified clam exercise. So on this, I'm just gonna go ahead and sit on this table, and you can use your couch or a bench or something like that. You're gonna sit right here on the edge of it. Put your feet close together like this, and then this is an important step that you can't forget you want to go ahead and engage your lower abdominals here. So you're kind of tilting your pelvis back a little bit and engaging this lower core. When you're in that position, open up your knees and push your feet together just like this. You can support yourself here. And so you're going to feel this in your butt and you want to hold this for like 30 seconds. This is a, a good beginner exercise to just start engaging those muscles. So hold it, 30 seconds, relax for a second, get back into that posterior pelvic tilt, lower core support, pushing my feet together and my knees to the outside and feeling it here through this posterior lateral chain and these muscles. Okay, so that's the modified clam. The next one I'm gonna do is just, this is pretty similar to the test we did with the single leg squat but we're gonna go down into this single leg position here, really drive through your left heel, and then you're gonna tap forward, then you're gonna tap outside, and then you're gonna tap back, okay? So I got a little bit of shaking, I'm not quite conditioned on this hip, because I haven't been working it enough, 
So you can see some of that, but think about really sitting back into your butt when you do this and not real forward with a ton of quad activity, okay? Because we want to really start strengthening that glute medius. So it's just those three positions. You're going to get fatigued from it. If you can, you can go a little bit lower. If you need to hold on to something, you can hold on to something too. And just work through those positions. And that's going to help strengthen the left one because I was posting with the left leg. The third one that everybody can do is just a simple step up. So a step up is like the first part of doing a box jump anyway. So if you're in CrossFit and you're doing box jumps and you need some work on those, start with your step ups. So I'm gonna use this table for my step up. I'll come around here. Let me just put it down. I don't have a good box in here right now, so I'm just gonna use this table. It's about the right height. So we're gonna take, if we're working on our left hip stability and strength, Take that up all the way onto the box and then nice and slow side up, boom, squeeze your butt at the top and then back down. So up, nice and slow, push down through this bottom heel, boom, squeeze. Think about dragging this opposite leg right on the edge of that box as you come up and really engaging at the top. So all three of these exercises are excellent for creating more hip stability. If you have low back and hip pain with it, make sure you get evaluated because this could just be part of the problem and there could be other stuff going on. But know that most of this stuff will resolve with a good rehab and treatment plan and best of luck you guys. If you have questions, feel free and drop them in the comments and we'll see you later.